Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're talking about checkerboarding dialogue tracks. And what that means is taking all of the recorded dialogue from one character and putting it on its own track in your session. So you're mixing a film and all your dialogue comes in on these consolidated tracks. I only have four tracks imported here, but there are at least three different characters in this one scene on these four tracks. So it gets pretty messy. And I'm not gonna complain about the video editor. His program is designed for cutting video. It's not designed for organizing audio. And they do a lot of things inside of those video editing programs to make it difficult to uh, work with the audio later, which is unfortunate, but that's what we have to work with. And at the end of the day, we just got to deal with it. I came up with several custom actions to make this process easier. Let's start out with no custom actions and we'll just um, take this dialogue section here. This is one character speaking. There's multiple mics active, but we're going with just the best sounding one. So we're just going to copy that over to our uh, first dialogue track. So I just held down command. It would be control on PC. When you have your time selection and your item selected, command will copy that item over to wherever you drag to. Only seven tracks here. That's not that many. But in the actual dialogue mix, I had 12 tracks of dialogue, and then I had something like 20 or so uh, source tracks, plus I had reverb tracks and Foley tracks and things like that. So I needed a better way of dealing with that. So when you have a lot of tracks, sometimes you can't see the source track and the destination track at the same time. So it gets pretty tricky to do that. Um, another thing is that if you're not careful, you can accidentally move your dialogue left and right in time, and that's not gonna work. So there is another uh, keyboard modifier you can use. On my computer, it's Control plus Command, and that will constrain its movement to just track instead of changing the time. And we can check in uh, mouse modifiers for media item, left, drag, move item vertically, or copy item vertically. So these two, and these are not default. So move item, copy item vertically. So that's important that you don't change the sync of your items as you're moving them. The other thing you can do is this copy um, within the time selection. So here I was, this track is selected, audio 23, and I go to dialogue three and press V. If we're not careful that pasted audio could go where the cursor is, not the start of the time selection. So um, you have to be very careful with that. So I need to move my cursor and then paste. As I said, it's fairly straightforward to do that, but you can see there's all these things that can go wrong. And it's hard to tell where these tracks actually, where these bits of audio came from in the original tracks. So the custom actions I built will hopefully make this a lot simpler. I'll just show you kind of an automated way of doing that first one, which is basically moving the audio to, the, um, to a specific track. I have this item selected on this track and it's going to jump to DX1 when I press this move to one. So it's split the item, it's cut, so put it into the clipboard, moved up to a specific track number, put the cursor at the start of the time selection, hit paste. So that works, it's okay, but it's not as good as it could be. So I'm gonna undo that. And let's look at this second set of actions that I've done, copy to DX1 and here, Something very similar, but it's kept it in place, but it's changed the color. So I decided to go with red to show which items have been used. So in the source tracks, I'll be able to know right away which tracks have been used and which ones haven't been used. So I've just gone through that a little bit quicker and also I've kind of future-proofed this edit. So I know that if I change my mind on this one, I don't have to listen to this one again. I can just listen to these other two takes um, or microphones to, uh, to choose my takes that will be used in the actual film. All right, so let's break down these actions. Let's start off with the first set of actions, which are not as good, but they are pretty simple. Move selection of items to track one. This is just a basic custom action. Cut selected area of items, go to start of time selection, select track one, paste items tracks. 
I just duplicate that action a bunch of times. So I have 10 of them and I just slightly change things. So this is exactly the same, except it's going to select track two. So there are many downsides. One is that it removes it from the, the source tracks. And two is that it relies on specific track numbers. So if you're doing with this with dialogue, maybe your dialogue tracks aren't at the very top of your session. Even if you have a folder, you have to remember that, okay, this is the second character, but I need to put it on track three because I already have the dialogue tracks in a folder. Or maybe you have your film at the top track. So your dialogue tracks start from track three. So it gets, yeah, it gets complicated. So the other way, using the second set of actions, the copy to DX, one, etc. Those are actually cycle actions. And I'm using the cycle action editor because it can do console commands. It's going to split items at time selection. It's going to copy the items. It's going to set that take to a custom color. I'll just show you where you can choose which custom colors. It's color management. and uh, set custom colors. On Mac OS, it's the same as your um, system's custom color. So it's these custom colors here. So number nine is this one, and that's the red that I'm using. So it's a little bit different on Windows, but I think it is basically the same. It's going to use the system colors. Anyways, back to this. It's gonna to go to the start of the time selection, and then it's going to run a console command. Capital S will select only a specific track, and it's going to go by name, so DX space one. So as long as my project template has a bunch of tracks named DX one, DX two, et cetera, my template will start with 10 tracks of dialogue named that way. You can choose any name you want for your template or any name you want to match with this. It's just a matter of editing this console command. So this could be sound effects one, fully one, whatever you want whatever you need to match your source to your destination track with, you just change the name there. I think that's pretty simple. And then finally, it pastes in place on that destination track. So as I said, I just duplicated this. The easiest way of doing that is through the export option. So export uh, selected cycle actions. I'll just put it on the desktop and call it cycles. I'll go to the desktop. I've got my cycles.ini, and I open that up in uh, plain text editor. I use text wrangler. So here it is, main cycle actions. So that's the this section of the cycle action editor. Action, this is the name of it. And then it lists the numbers there. And the other thing we need to do is, so if we're doing this a bunch of times, we just need to change this number of actions, nb underscore actions. It's one, so we could change this to three if we're having three um, actions. We could actually just do this to uh, change this to SFX. SFX one and the custom color, let's say three, and change SDX to SFX one. And take this line, paste, paste, this one becomes two, this one becomes three, and it's just a very, very quick process of uh, kind of batch renaming these things. Two, three, and so we'll s save this, quit, go into the import uh, import in section main. And once again, take that cycle I and I, and there we go. Copy selected area to track named SFX three, two, and one. So now those actions are in the action list. So let's open up the action list and SFX. And I've got these actions here. I can put them into a toolbar or whatever. So that's it for me. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you found this helpful, please consider being a patron at patreon.com slash the Reaper blog. It would really mean a lot to me. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You can join the Reaper blog community on Facebook and check out reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. <laughs>